I'm Liz Case from Hat to Hem, and today I'm feeling a little nostalgic. So this, so this is Samantha Parkington. You know she is a serious doll because she has a last name. For those who don't know, Samantha is part of the American Girl collection. It's a very popular doll brand, and they've been around for quite some time. In fact, Samantha has been around for quite some time because I've had her for 23 years. Really. And she wasn't one of those dolls that just kind of sits on a shelf as a display. She was played with. A lot. Personally, I think the fact that she still looks as good as saying something, but that's just me. So why is Samantha out right now? Well, she's out because I'm going to make a dress for her. And not just any dress, I'm going to make the Cranberry Party Dress from Samantha Surprise. The Cranberry Party Dress was featured on the third book in the Samantha series and it was sold as part of Samantha's collection as her holiday dress. Now parts of the dress kind of vary depending on what your source material is. Sometimes the dress looks really bright, sometimes it looks a little darker. Uh, the lace on her collar changes depending on which version of the dress you have, if it's an older one or, well not a newer one, they don't make it anymore. But if it was from the original release or if they re-released a little bit later. It really depended on when you got this dress. Now the dress is described in the American Girl catalog and it's also described in the book itself. It's described in the paper dolls that I have. These are not my original paper dolls. I did have these. I'm pretty sure my mom gave them away. This was an eBay find from my husband as a surprise and I was very pleasantly surprised. Anyway, what the descriptions all have in common is that the dress is made out of taffeta it has a white collar. In the paper dolls, it says it's a taffeta collar, but everywhere else it says it's lace. It also has a wide white ribbon around her waist, a fluffy white bow, and she wears it with white stockings and black shoes. Now here's the part that's extra exciting for me. The original doll dress patterns that they sold in the 90s. I am so excited to share this pattern with you. But first, I need to pause so I can tell you about this video's sponsor, Anna Louisa Jewelry. Every American Girl doll has a special necklace included in her accessories. They can be for luck or part of the culture. Often, they are tied in with their story. They might be a family heirloom or a gift from a loved one. Both Samantha and Molly have lockets where they keep pictures of their parents. These pieces of jewelry were a key part of these girls' stories. And now you can add jewelry to your story with Anna Luisa Jewelry. They offer high quality pieces at affordable prices because there are no luxury markups. Their designs are as unique as you are and are purposely designed to make you feel both empowered and elegant. They have a range of styles that can be mixed or matched. I personally like my pieces to match, so I love that I can usually pair pieces together easily. They are also dedicated to sustainability. They are carbon neutral and are a certified climate neutral company. They use recycled, reclaimed, and upcycled materials, and their diamonds are lab grown. Even their packaging is made from recycled materials, from their boxes to their jewelry cards. They truly believe that high quality jewelry shouldn't cost the planet. You can learn more on their About Us pages on their website. A beautiful thing about new jewelry is that you add the significance to the pieces. I gifted my younger cousins matching Elise necklaces, so the three of us have something to symbolize our bond. My husband bought me the Willow necklace last year for Valentine's Day, and I think of him every time I wear it. You can also find something that symbolizes other hopes and interests. Some pieces can even call back to your favorite American Girl doll. The Lev Hart necklace reminds me of Kirsten's Amber Hart, and the Rebecca pendant instantly made me think of Josefina's Garnet pendant, which has always been my favorite. You can also layer the necklaces, bracelets, and rings to fully represent who you are. If you click on the link in the description, you can get buy one get one 40% off while supplies last. Visit Anna Luisa Jewelry and start adding to your story today. I wanted to take some time and show you what's actually involved with this little pattern set. This particular one obviously is for Samantha, which you can see from her little portrait at the top. These patterns were part of their pastimes. In the 90s, Pleasant Company released uh, different pastimes for each American Girl doll. These included cookbooks, craft books, theater kits. I believe the paper dolls were also included in that. I believe they also sold little kits so you could do actual crafts and they'd provide materials. And obviously they also had doll patterns. I believe they had these for the first six dolls they released. So in chronological order, that would be Felicity, Josefina, Kirsten, Addie, Samantha, and Molly. 
So obviously the patterns would be specific for each girl, but I thought I would take you through what's included with the Samantha one. They're all tied with a nice little bow. And on the inside, there is a picture of all the garments you can make with these patterns. As you can see, they're not all of Samantha's clothes, but you could probably use some of them as templates, maybe, for other things. So we have her birthday outfit, her changes for Samantha cape, her Samantha surprise party dress, her nightgown, some lacy whites, which are her under things, and you have gaiters and a hat and muff. And then on the back, it explains what the patterns are. So you can see once again, it describes her party dress as being made of silk taffeta, the color of Christmas cranberries. At the top, you can see it's called Samantha's Pretty Clothes. I think they're just trying to say her clothes are pretty, not that these are her pretty clothes and her work clothes are elsewhere. Because to my knowledge, there is just one set of patterns for each doll. I don't think there's two. I've looked very hard. I'm pretty sure it's just one. So next we have the instructions. Uh, in this case, it comes with uh, two different sets, I believe, of instructions. You can see there's her lacy pinafore dress, but then on the back, it's her party dress. The instructions start with a description of what the dress is, when she would have wore it, and what she would have worn with it. Material list, and then it has the pattern layout here. Then you open it up, and you have steps one through... 17 of how to make this dress, which I am hoping to follow very closely. I tend to kind of go off and do my own thing sometimes without reading the pattern instructions. I'm going to try and make this pattern as it was intended to be made. Hopefully I stick to that. <laughs> On the last page here, it says sew right, which is just pretty basic sewing tips that would apply to this particular set of patterns. It has some little tips and reminders. Um, a guide to different types of lace, all seams at a quarter of an inch, which is very good to know. How to put in elastic waistbands, double folded fabric method for neck bands, sleeve bands, waistbands, and straps, and then how to put in the Velcro. Now down here is something that I really liked. Uh, it has a designer credit note. So it says that Samantha's dresses were made by Jessie the seamstress, who found out the latest fashions by reading The Delineator, a magazine for ladies at the turn of the century. Pleasant Company's designers poured over rare editions of Delineator 2. The designs were adapted into sewing patterns by Nancy J. Martin, noted craft designer and quilter. I love that they gave her credit. That doesn't always happen. So that's really nice. And as you can see, this pattern is from the 90s. Oh, wow. I almost said this pattern is over 20 years old, which I mean is true, but it's actually over 30. Okay. Anyway... Uh, let's look at the actual pattern here and see everything is to scale. There's a couple different pages here. Everything is very clearly labeled. I kind of want to work on more projects than this. Uh, I'm especially interested in making her lacy whites, but I think since the dress would come on its own, I should make just the dress. I can always make the lacy whites later and show if they make a difference underneath the dress or not. But for now, let's just stick to the cranberry party dress. This is editing Melissa here. At this point, I opened all my different packages and showed off my taffeta fabric, and I showed off my lace, and I had a lot of fun with it. However, that footage ended up not transferring property and it's not usable. I am so sorry. So let's just move right into getting this pattern ready to use. So here are the pattern pieces that I cut out. It took a fraction of the time it would have if I had to trace them, so I stand by my decision. The only part I didn't cut out was the skirt, and I did that because it's just a rectangle. There's really no reason for me to waste paper on that. I can just measure it with a roller and cut out with a rotary blade. It will be fine. So 
believe it or not, and I don't expect you to believe this, I've been filming for about an hour and a half. It's late, it's after two in the morning now, so I should probably go to bed. That means that this project is technically a one day make, kinda. All I really did was talk and cut a pattern, and I have done the pattern prep for uh, some of my other one day makes just to make life easier. So assuming I get the dress completely done tomorrow, that would be enough to qualify for the one day make playlist, right? All right, bed. I will see you in the morning. All right, let's be honest, I'll see you in the afternoon. Alright, so I have all of the taffeta cut out. There is a couple of lace pieces I haven't cut out yet. I'm going to do that when I get to them. I did deviate from the pattern a little bit here because I also chose to cut out some lace pieces for the back. It wasn't in the pattern, but it is in the illustration. But I think it would be nice to include it. Alright, so getting all this cut out was actually step one. Step two is to base these lace pieces to the bodice. And step three is to attach those bodice pieces to the shoulders. So I'm going to do that now. And then I guess we'll just take it one step at a time from step four to step 17. So I have the little bodice stitched up here, and now I'm going to press my seams. I looked at the Samantha dress that's on my doll, and it looks like the shoulder seams are just pressed back completely, it's not open or anything like that. So I'm going to try and copy that. Press flat first, then I'm going to press them open and then over. Open. One more thing, the seams on the Samantha dress are actually serged, which I get that seems like a lot less trouble than trying to do French seams or anything like that. I was debating on if I wanted to go a little fancier, but the serger might be the way to go. The only problem is I don't have this color thread for my serger. I think I will use a darker color instead that way if it's kind of just peeks out it'll blend in a little bit more than if it's bright red so i guess i better set my serger up so the next step is to attach the neck band so first i cut out a little piece of lace i basted it to the bottom of the neck band i double fold the neck band first pressing it in half and then bringing the edges to meet the crease on the inside and now I'm clipping it onto the bodice. I threaded my machine with white thread. The idea is that hopefully it will blend into the lace. You can't quite see it, but I have that nice burgundy thread in the bobbin. So it should blend in with the taffeta on the backside. We'll see. All right, so the collar fits perfectly, but, but the little valley for the, the scallop is right underneath her chin, and I'm not sure I like how that looks. This is gonna take a little bit of extra time, but I think I'm gonna just cut out a little piece of lace and just sew it right in this spot. It feels like such a small thing to worry about, but, but at the same time, I waited over 20 years for this dress, so I think I'll just cut out the little piece of lace.
It's such a little thing, but I'm glad I did it. I do think it looks a lot better now, so I'm gonna say it was worth the time. So step five called for gathering stitches being run along the bottom and the top of the sleeves. And I figured while my machine was set to gather, I might as well run the gathering stitches for the skirt as well. And I figured since I have this piece out, I might as well serge the bottom. The hem is only a quarter inch wide, so I figured this will definitely make life a little bit easier once it's time for that step. Alright, so now it's time to gather up the bottom of these sleeves and try and set them into the sleeve bands. Okay, so I'm deviating from the pattern a little bit. I know I said I wouldn't do that, but I am. I figured I already did with the lace on the back pieces, so what's a little more? This time I'm deviating because of the sleeve cuff. The way they wanted me to do it would have had a line of stitching going along the outside of the sleeve band. At first I was like, all right, whatever, it's no big deal. But then I looked at my Samantha dress and I noticed that her cuffs aren't like that. You can't see any outside stitching on her cuffs. So I took a good look at how her cuffs were made and I think I figured it out and that's what I did. So what I think you're supposed to do in order to get that effect is fold the sleeve cuff in half, stick it right sides together onto the sleeve, stitch at about a quarter of an inch in, and then serge the raw end. You press the seam towards the main part of the sleeve, and the next thing you know, you have a sleeve cuff with no visible outside stitching. I probably could have done that for the collar too, but at the end it didn't matter. You can't see the stitches because of the lace, so who cares? I clipped the edge of the sleeve to the armhole, working from the outside in. I stitched down the seam and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The velcro took a little bit of time to figure out. I actually didn't even bother reading the instructions. I just looked at my Samantha dress and I copied what they did. And then I stitched from just above the velcro all the way around and down to the waistline. And now I have a little doll bodice with a fancy lace collar. I think it's looking fairly close to the one in the catalog, so I'm not done yet though. I still need to attach the skirt. I'm going to gather the skirt up with the gathering stitches that I stitched earlier. And then I am going to attach it to the waistband. I'm going to take a piece of my ribbon and I'm going to sew it on right above the seam line on the outside of the dress. The instructions say to only stitch it along the lower edge of the ribbon, so that's what I'm going to do. Once that's on, I'm going to stitch the lower part of the skirt together. Not all the way up because it's going to need to still be able to get over her body and her arms and her head and all that. <laughs> or up over her feet depending on which direction I'm going so it's going to need an opening in the back then I'm going to press it under a quarter of an inch and I am going to stitch that down on my sewing machine once that's done I'm going to add my little velcro pieces up the back And with that, the dress is done. I can't believe that after all this time, I finally have another Samantha dress. Like this has been 23 years in the making and it's here and I'm just so happy. Is the dress perfect? No. The one area in particular that bothers me is that I wish the cuffs were just a little bit more fitted, but that's okay. I can move Velcro later if it really bothers me and I really don't think it's going to, honestly. <laughs> Now I got the pattern on eBay. I know there are other copies of it on there. I know that there are 
patterns for the other dolls on there. So if you're interested in getting either this pattern or one of the other American Girl patterns, I would recommend it. The instructions were easy to follow. Granted, I am not a beginner sewer. I've been doing this for a decade, but I've been doing this for a decade. For someone who is self-taught and has a decent amount of sewing experience, this was very easy. It might be a little bit more difficult if you're new to sewing, but and it could be a good project if you're just trying to experiment a little bit. But if you know your way around a pattern and you're not afraid of doing little finicky work here and there, you should be fine with this pattern. I just, I keep looking at it and smiling. <laughs> if you'd be interested in any other American Girl content, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if there's anything figure you'd like to see or any particular doll you love. Let me know if you like this dress. Let me know if you're following along with my uh, ultimate Samantha dress bracket that I had going on in my Instagram stories. I am planning on doing more ultimate doll dress brackets in the future. In the future sounds very far away. I am actually starting my next one on Monday. So if you're interested in voting on what your favorite American Girl dress is for each doll, then please follow me on Instagram so you can take part in that poll. I think I have 16 dresses lined up for the next one that you can vote on which will be played over a few rounds for pretty much all of next week. I almost feel like she needs a necklace or something. But you know where you get a necklace? Anna Louisa Jewelry. Link is in my description below. Uh, that was a lame segue, but seriously, check them out because I really like their pieces. It's what I wear most often. And even though they're sponsoring this video, I would probably recommend them anyway because I like the quality of their work. I like their designs. And that make me happy. <laughs> anyway, I am so happy right now. I I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much to my patrons for making this video possible. And thank you to you for watching this video. I really hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye. Yeah, something between the hair and the dress feel very Christmassy to me, but I'm not sure why.